Hey, what's going on? YouTube Kenny here, and today we're going to go ahead and cover Jamia earnings. So, if you're wondering why we haven't covered Jamia earnings or even did a video on Jamia for a while, I'm just going to be straight up honest with you in this video. We're going to tell you why we haven't been doing any Jamia coverage or uh, talking too much about Jamia outside of the live stream. So, obviously, I'm still very bullish on Jamia. I showed you in the M1 No Look portfolio that we were 40% weight, there was some criticism. We're gonna cover all those criticisms, we're gonna talk about everything, but relax, I'm not burnt out, there's not creator burnout. People like me don't get burnt out. If you know my background, then I've done some hard things. Um, whatever, everybody's done hard things. That's not me like playing the world's smallest violin, but I'm just saying, relax. The things that bother most people of the younger age, and this is not an age thing, but there's gonna be a day of reckoning where Certain generations probably will have to like come to Jesus or something. That's not for this video. And I've probably lost folks here. And you're like, hey, boomer, relax, calm down, stop yelling at me. All right, whatever. That's fine. Hey, first of all, though, if you are here for the Jamia breakdown and the earnings, just skip forward. I'm going to talk about some real talk. Talk about way back one year ago, kind of the macro thematic postulations that we made. That was indeed the word that we used at the time. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we're just going to think about it and talk through this in one take, see what happens. But uh, we will cover some market stuff too, market shenanigans. Uh, so we'll get that on the front end. But this might go long, but I really just want to have a conversation with that camera right there. But really you, uh, especially if you j jumped into Jamia and were new in investing and thought it was going to go to the moon like right away. And it actually did. If you didn't trim your position, that's on you. If you're not a trader, that's fine. We did say this was a 10-year play. So let's back up. So macro thematically, the first thing we said was, hey, Africa, massive comp continent, massive continent, hyper nuanced. There's a bunch of pockets of hyper growth in Africa, right? There's plenty of modernized or modernizing countries within Africa that definitely have hyper growth. Okay, so what constitutes hyper growth? So the couple things, if you're talking about e-commerce, you're looking at Melee, you're looking at SE, you're looking at all these other trailing indicators, right? Southeast Asia, South America, right? It worked, okay? And the model was growing quite, uh, quite normally if you put it against its peers. So like Melee, Mercado Libre, at the same time, in its growth, had the same struggles, we're doing the same thing, doing the same amount of revenue, same market cap, everything. What's my point? My point is Africa is very, very early. Where else do we see hyper growth? We talked about it, internet. Internet was very important to us, hyper growth in internet. Internet will grow exponentially, logarithmically. You will get that favorable condition for you. That's a tailwind. What else? There's a expanding youth. What does that mean? Expanding labor force, labor force, money. What is a headwind? So what's going to get in our way? Well, geez, the whole world is pretty much going into recession right now. So, I mean, if to me is selling off, everybody's selling off if you haven't noticed. So, I mean, there's definitely a sell off going on. Wake up and smell the coffee, I guess. Um, you know, Costco is getting hit. Apple's getting hit. Facebook is taking a beating as well. So, I mean, Companies are under pressure. So that's where I want to start with when it comes to the Jimmy U play. So we have identified the macro headwinds, the macro tailwinds. The second thing we said was, okay, in terms of fear, uncertainty, and doubt, what are the naysayers saying? They're saying the infrastructure is bad. There's a lot of theft, all that stuff. We went into the data and we realized that, hey, according to the conditions in Africa right now, quantitatively, I'm not there. You know, we did interview folks. We did get a sense of, hey, is this actually a scam and we don't see it because we're not there? No, we interviewed folks from Nigeria and Egypt and a couple other places that we didn't, you know, showcase on this video because, you know, we didn't have permissions. But fine, we did our due diligence as a company and we said, hey, it's still good. It's real. It's a real company and it's growing. That said, you know, whether you like it or not, all it is is a macro play, meaning you got to wait. You got to wait. This is how the game works. This is how stocks work. Netflix didn't go up 6 million percent overnight. It did drop quite a bit overnight, though. 
Uh, but really, no, I mean, I'm not really, I'm not here to like pander to anybody. I'm not going to be the Jamia guy. I'm not going to be your Jamia cheerleader. I think that's stupid. Honestly, like the people who are doing that obviously just want clicks, just want views. They're trying to talk to your innate, like, I don't know, sense of like FUD or belonging. If you want to belong, belong to the community, but this is a community of free thinkers. Like Jamia is one play out of many plays, a play that I like a lot. And I like it. A ton. I mean, I, again, you know, if I didn't already say this, it's 40% of our M1 finance portfolio, which is absolutely bonkers when it comes to any kind of risk management for portfolio management. But that said, you know, it's a high conviction name for us. So things going to work out well. That says at $6, would I buy here? We'll talk about it. We'll talk about the charts. Um, and again, this is going to be a very long video. It's already five minutes long. Haven't even gotten to the to the gist or the meat and potatoes. But I think this is really important because I see a lot of creators, a lot of folks on the internet. Ah, it's just so sleazy and I'm just not that dude. So I'm just gonna be real with you. And I'll address all the controversy. I mean, I did get like two or three hate comments or something like that for Jamia. And I'll address them all. I don't care. It's not gonna hurt my feelings. Like, I don't know, relax. Um, so yeah, let's let's do that. Let's talk about all that. Let's get into the earnings. Um, I gotta press some buttons here. Again, if you're new to this channel, this is one take. I redo everything in one take. But if you're here for Jamia, I'm gonna tell you don't even subscribe because we're gonna do maybe quarterly earnings and that's it. Maybe one or two videos when something really exciting happens. You know, I'll cheerlead then. But like everything else is just noise and it's also just fear, uncertainty, and doubt as well. So I mean, based on that, we don't need to, you know, worry about all that. All of it's noise. You know, I'm not trimming my position anytime soon, and it's just fine. All right, this is the uh, the roadmap for today. As you can see here, man, everything is getting blasted. Just really, really devastated. Google or Alphabet down 5% today. Tesla down another 7%. Uh, we're calling for Tesla to go ahead and do the down thing for some time now. Um, did close our position. I reopened it personally. I didn't really call that out in the chat, though. Consumer defense was finally getting a bid, and this is going to be really important because people are really, really looking for a place to hide. And so the places to hide right now are probably actually utilities. That's just because, you know, you're going to be able to offset that cost to consumer. You have what they call pricing power. You're always going to need utilities, and you can set your price. So utilities are going to do great. NEE up 2.92%. That is like the flagship name. It's the Apple of utilities. It's also very ESG friendly. We talked about that. We talked about how that might really, really outperform this year. Uh, we've been looking for an entry. Today would have been a great entry. We missed it. Uh, so we're going to look for a pullback here probably. So yeah, uh, it's it's at an interesting spot if you want to invest for a couple of years. Um not a couple of years, a couple of months. It's probably a good runner from here on out. That said, uh, energy, not as strong as I suspected. Um, we're going to need to see some strength here. The, the thing that I think about energy right now is there's probably some political risk, a lot of political risk, and I'm seeing that right now and just the way that people are kind of structuring uh, their positioning when it comes to energy. I think political risk in the sense of Folks are going to get st start getting mad at energy companies for being so profitable, right? And no other place would this happen. But essentially, you know, you've seen it. I'm not going to mention any names, but there's definitely folks in the Congress and the Senate that are uh, pretty uh, upset with uh, the way that they are saying these companies are gouging prices or whatever like that. So it's just something to look at. Um this is a Costco bear call spread that we took. Essentially, we sold the 440 calls, and we bought the 450. It's a couple days, but uh, we should be able to collect some premium here if it doesn't transact past this. Uh, even if tomorrow is a green day for Costco, I do believe that it can come back. But just got to stay under 440. If it's under 440, we print. So pretty happy about that. Um Here's one that might be interesting for you Zim or folks. A lot of people followed the Zim trade. Uh, this is a chart showing shippers viewing uh, available capacity. So shippers see available capacity. It's definitely increasing right now uh, exponentially. So for whatever reason, uh, ships are going to be available soon. So this might be a leading indicator to kind of maybe trim some transport stock positions. I don't know. 
It's a tough one. I got to look more into it too. I'm just saying that this is definitely something you want to watch. Uh, it's quite massive, as you can see here. It's um, it's really, really significant how fast this thing is going up. Um, we were talking about the tightness of the labor market, and we we're talking to Mike about this. Um, he's our econ guy. But essentially, you know, looking at this, thinking about it, um, Y Combinator, if you don't know what it is, it's like an incubator or accelerator uh, when it comes to like startups. Um, but I mean, man, even they're saying like, hey, plan for the worst. So, I mean, there's not going to be private rounds of funding like there were. And it's just another indicator job market tight on the conventional side on the young and inspiring piece not looking good look looking like a lot of layoffs looking like a lot of money not coming in here and this is why this is important the reason why it's important is even if you go into a recession one of the things that you want to look at is generationally where are your 30 somethings right are they starting businesses so you get gdp growth when you get companies like Apple, Google, Microsoft, when did those come into play, right? Right? Late 70s, 80s, right? That's when Steve Jobs was in his 30s or whatever like that. I might be doing bad maths here, but I'm just saying. Essentially, you know, demographically, it needs to align with that. And systematically, talking about the startup here, Y Combinator, for instance, uh, Incubator, if these things are not in place after the recession peels and inflation gets back to normal, if we do have a recession, uh, it's going to be very abysmal for the outlook of the growth of GDP because you need these massive new innovative companies to disrupt. And I know that word's been overused, but traditionally really actually disrupt and grow. But those companies aren't created in this cycle. You get Japan 1980. You get my point. You know, to Toyota and Sony are great companies, but they're not hyper growth companies, right? They don't grow the GDP of a country. Where Google, Amazon, Netflix, all those do. All right, so now to Jamia, what we've been waiting for. So the one thing I'll say is like everything here is consistent with what they're saying. And there's no like crazy rib flags or anything like that. So, you know, it says here orders 40% year over year up, gross merchandise value, 27% year over year up. Of course, these are the highlights. Revenue increased 44% year over year. So year over year. So let's take a look at year over year since this is the way they're breaking it down, and especially in this first kind of column. Um, there were a couple interesting kind of nuances that got picked out here. There's some currency risk here that really actually came into uh, the forefront, meaning like because the U.S. dollar is so strong, like they put the hurt real bad. But it's at a rate that's not sustainable so i forgive jimia for that but there's some bad stuff in here too so we'll talk about it but it's it's generally good there's not a lot in here that i'm like was surprised at pretty much what i expected a little bit more growth on the growth side but the biggest thing and the thing that i think is actually most important is quarterly active consumers and this is up as you can see here uh going from uh, 2.4 to 3.1. That's significant. That's all we really care about is our users using the platform. And so if they are and if that is growing, and that's pretty substantial, 28.7% uh, year over year, still a very good number. Orders are going up, but uh, be careful with that one. A lot of things can change. Again, gross merchandise value is actually going up. So if GMV going up and orders are going up, that's consistent and that's fine. So we're seeing both of those go up, no problem. Um, what else do I want to look at? Okay, so here's uh, some of the other things. Uh, revenue is up. Profit is barely up, which is fine. Up 12%, 12.6%. Uh, here's where we get into some of the bad stuff. All these are negatives. Fulfillment expenses costing more money. We know why that is. Essentially, they've kind of contracted and uh, went towards kind of uh, servicing their more lucrative and more efficient markets, uh, countries in which they are doing business and, and also kind of scaling down uh, some of the other pieces of, uh, of their business and really consolidating into the, their gains into where they do the best, right? That said, sales and advertising bleeding real good. It's putting on the hurt real good, almost 100%. That's like troubling and problematic but i did see uh somewhere in the quarter over quarter i think there was actually a decrease technology and content expense 
this is totally par for the course. You got to do something to grow. Uh, would love to see this come down a little bit, especially if you're spending 100% to capture maybe only like 20, what is this? Um, yeah, 100% in advertising for what is a revenue increase of 44%. Okay, uh, I'm not gonna judge. Again, hyper growth, that's what we're looking for. Technology and content expo expense, same thing. GNA, sure. Uh, EBITDA is a big one because this is adjusted for all your shares outstanding and everything like that too. Operating losses, here we go. The big one, 40 to 66. But again, a lot of that is going to be with all due to all that CapEx spend when it comes to really uh, realigning and restructuring their facilities. They've talked to you about this. And so again, there's not anything here that's kind of like too... Um, too curious for me to to kind of raise a red flag for uh it's a growing company it's going to have um it's going to have its its uh, hurdles so let's just go over this really quickly just to make sure it makes sense to us still again pe ratio that's not going to matter right now um it's just not profitable revenue is going up had a little bit of a trough here uh it's funny because again we've talked about this it's not totally bad because um this is you know pandemic headwinds um Whereas it's really inverse from what happened with Amazon, where they pulled all that stuff forward in uh, Africa, it seems like it was the opposite, quite the opposite. People did less spending online. They were more consolidated. And that's probably because obviously just generally a lack of discretionary uh, spending relative to what America has. Free cash flow, obviously the burn rate is the issue. We did a burn rate calculation and it was like, hey, they have five years without even running into any kind of uh, kind of uh, shared dilution situation. Um, but again, they did that capital raise right here. It's been some time. They haven't done any more lately. Do I think they're going to dilute shares? Somebody was saying, hey, looks like they're going to dilute shares and running out of money. Uh, right now, honestly, all you got to look at is the current ratio. So current ratio, um, liabilities against assets, really. But uh, they can pay their bills for three point two years essentially right that's what this is saying so down from five like the current ratio a healthy current ratio in a normal company that's not in hyper growth is like one point one point two to one point five to two right anything more than that you're looking at mergers and acquisitions you're looking at capex heavy capex intensive spending or you're worried you're about to go bankrupt um 3.2 is totally acceptable because you can see here capex spend up here's capital expenditures and that's really important uh, we talked about this. If we're spending money on like facilities or anything like that to 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 you know work on growth, whether it's like technology platforms or whatever, that's totally totally acceptable. Market cap going down because price is going down. That's fine too. Uh, EBITDA is the one that is kind of scary, but you know at the same time, again, there was a contraction and they're pulling back into their kind of core feature categories. So we got to let that play out. Um, I would like to see it stabilize a little bit more this quarter, but I mean, this is still just one quarter. It might take a little bit of time to see their gains from the decisions that they've made. Um, what else? PE ratio. Yeah, that doesn't matter for PE. Um, so again, here's the chart. And if you're asking me, let's just be really, really real. Let's do the real talk thing. Um, again, when we were talking about this all day long, we were saying, you know, all the way up here, could it come down? And I did get a lot of kind of comments like it probably will see lower times before upper times. But yeah, I mean, I'm not going to divest from the stock just because of that. Um, and obviously, you know, there's there's definitely things that we saw coming. Did we see this head and shoulders coming? Yeah, we kind of saw it. We talked about it. Can't do nothing about it. Did we say the floor was probably 20? Yeah, it looked like the floor is 20. I mean, look at this. Anybody who has any kind of technical know-how, CMT, whatever, who cares? But like, hey, there's a lot of supply here and it was consolidating in a decent range. So 20 didn't didn't hold, it fails. Okay, where's what's next? You say, okay, 12's got to hold. Does 12 hold? No, it doesn't hold. You know, what do you want me to do? You got to remember, this is a, uh, at not, at now we're looking into like a micro cap dame, which, you know, to me, it's just more glorious because if you're still buying, uh, the rewards are going to be that much more. The other thing that I'd say, too, is before I even get into the chart even more is just think about it, right? Like people are people are indiscriminately, incorrectly betting against 
the continent of Africa, entire continent, entire generation. Um, and so you mean like to me, you're like everything's different. No, it's not different. You're like, oh, there's the there's the Pacific Century, and then all of a sudden there's like you know Southeast Asia, and then there's um, uh, melee with uh, South America. But you're like, well, Africa's different. Like how? It's like people, people trying to be people, trying to do better, trying to buy more goods. I mean, it's kind of kind of like a open and shut case to me. So, I mean, it's one of those instances, again, where like as long as the Internet continues to grow, as long as they have an expanding labor force, you should be totally fine. Anyways, yeah, so we busted this last like line of support, which is like 650. And you asked me, hey, real talk, Kenny – can it go down? And even Richard Samsky from the chat was like, hey, maybe five bucks or something. I was like, man, we got to wait here. Um, obviously, in my M1 finance portfolio, we're putting in more money every week, literally $100 a week. So $40 a week because it's 40% weight to Jamia. But that said, I mean, I can really see it getting down to $2, like especially given the market, given what's going on, even with this pretty good earnings report relative to what's been happening with Jamia. And you know it's pretty decent because we did get a little bit of a run up, you know. Um, you know, what can happen? Can it go to $2? Yeah, it can absolutely go to $2. They can dilute shares here. They might be like, hey, we're going to dilute. You know, here's another thing. If you really want to think about it, think about when they did that, right? A couple quarters back. So, I mean, like, they dil diluted shares, like up here, up here, like around here, right? Like, good CFO, good on you. That's when you did it. I mean, if you're running around doing it down here, I'm going to wonder why you didn't do it back here, right? Like, give them some credit, guys. I mean, like, this is a finely run company. There's a bunch of good institutional investors in this trade as well. They have the backing. They have the intelligence. I'm really, truly not worried about it. If it gets bought out, that's problematic for my taste. But if it does get bought out, it probably gets bought out at a pretty decent premium. So I'm trying to get my cost average down. I don't know, though. We'll see. There's a couple players in the market for this, but I don't know. Um, again, so $2 possibly. And then finally, you know, hey, if you're wondering, here it is, M1 Finance Portfolio. This is the one we started in January. And the criticism was, hey, if this is such a small part of your net worth, then this doesn't show a lot of confidence. That was one. The other one was like, it doesn't matter because this is not, again, a large part of my net worth. But a uh, little bit of a stereotype. Um, not really a stereotype, but my personality is not like that. This means probably more to me than the money. Like the money doesn't mean shit, but – the thing that I put here in front of folks, like this means more to me. This is like honor, like, right? Like, so like being an honorable person, loyalty, duty, respect, selfless service, honor, integrity, personal courage, and all that stuff. Some of you got that. Some of you are sitting there, they get it. Uh, honor is a big thing for me. So, I mean, this make, means far more than what is actually going on in my portfolio. In fact, I could probably go live in a hut tomorrow and be very, very happy as long as I'm with the people I love. I still got my kids and my dog. I'll be all set. So, you know, if you're wondering why I did this long video, because I'm here to convince you that if you're here for Jamia content, you might not get that much Jamia content. So I'm sorry if I lose a lot of subscribers off this video. Uh, I didn't mean to. I'm still going to make videos when it comes to, like, earnings reports and stuff like that. Again, and if something happens, it's cool, but... I just don't think like if you have a five to ten year time horizon, I don't want to watch the pot boil, if that makes sense. That's one. And hey, I'm going to give you something here. So there's a gentleman from SP Investing. He covers Jamia. He emailed me a while back. I totally botched it up and didn't email back because I forgot. But that said, I've been checking out his videos. And for the folks who care about that kind of granularity – and I'm not saying he's wrong. He's great. He does really good work. He does really good due diligence. As a matter of fact, I'm, this is why I'm not going to do it. Like he's doing all the things that you guys are interested in that I'm not generally. Uh, and he's doing them very well. So if you want to go check that out, it's SP Investing. Um, definitely. I did not talk to him. I've never talked to him except for the email he sent me. But, you know, if you go there and you see his stuff, you're going to be like, dang, I don't even need to watch Kenny for Jimmy anymore. And thank you. You're welcome. But... 
if you go there and you're still like, dang, but I really want Kenny to talk about Jamia, come back to this video and say, Kenny, we watched his stuff, actually watch his stuff, but we still want you to cover Jamia. If I get enough, meaning like, I don't know, we got a ton of subscribers for Jamia. So if we get like 20 comments that say, yeah, Kenny, we want you to keep covering Jamia, then maybe I will, not maybe, I will, if you, if you get, okay, guess what? Okay, if we get 25 comments, that means you guys really do care. But if there's only like five dudes left for Jamia, those dudes, you got to go check him out. Check out the SP guy. He's good. Does And if I can't do better than him, why would I make videos about that kind of stuff, right? Like the things I care about, you know, okay, you know, data analytics firm. You know, we care about quant. We care about sentiment analysis. We care about information arbitrage. We care about anomaly detection. We care about alternative data sources, website. We care about all those utility data and, and all those things that make Africa a macro environment for us to succeed and excel. So because of all that, ta-da, you have Redcliffe Research. But I don't hold the candle when it comes to breaking down the balance sheet like SP investing. And that's because I think, not that's not useful, it's very useful. Uh, some of it, it's noise when it comes to in uncontrolled intangibles. And you're probably wondering like, why? Kenny, but a lot of your picks are really good and stuff like, don't you break down stuff? Yes, I do, but here's the thing. The biggest thing and the biggest reason why we are very successful, believe it or not, is nothing to do with that. It's just because we've run businesses before and have worked in institutions with the most amount of bureaucracy. So from the startup level, from the refugee poor level to like the hanging out with people who are in uh, the presidential cabinet of many countries. So like, I have a breadth of experience and our team has a breadth of experience that is able to like look at a problem set and really pull out that truth. That's where we do really well. So if you're asking me like, hey, Kenny, on line 13 of the 10Q in Jamia's earnings, it says this, what do you think of this? I don't have any edge. I have no alpha, nor do I think you, do you have any alpha there? So for that reason, the alpha that I have for the Jamia play is I've done my macro research and I'm holding with what they call diamond hands, boys. So hey, like it or leave it. If you unsubscribe, I'm sorry if I uh, offended anybody with that because it's YouTube, man. But I refuse to be a shameless snake oil salesman. Not doing it for subscribers. In fact, our trading accounts are just absolutely crushing it right now. Makes no sense for me to even do videos, pretty inefficient right now, but I'm doing them because I love y'all and I enjoy doing them. But when it comes to this, I don't think I'm being of service to do it. Anyways, SP Investing, check it out. See you later. Be humble, be safe, live for the journey. We love you. Take care, everybody. Bye.